Uh, look, I, I think that the reason that the female characters are unlikable is because they think the only way that you can show a strong female character is to make her a bitch. And I just said I a word that I normally don't say. And that's what and, I said is, yeah, it's in the writing, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't or think that's them. I don't think that's right. Or just make them men. Basically, that too. They're, yeah. They're just well, the tearing the the your men. Let's not really forget about it. It's not just making them men, but making making them better men than any man. Men, 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 men. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I, I saw Rings of Power in the theater, and I thought it was terrible. Yeah, do share yeah. because uh, you haven't bored. you haven't been here since uh, since oh, right. you had that pleasure. Like I know yeah. you shared your your thoughts other places, but for those of our audience that uh, have not yet heard your opinion, we know you went to see it with Bali, and we know what he felt. But uh, what did you feel about? The ranks of power. How was your experience seeing two episodes on the big screen? I was utterly bored. I was, like the only likable characters were the dwarves. Oddly, Princess Diza, while, while that actress may be annoying in interviews, she was actually a likable character. <laughs> you know, um, so so, and the interplay between Elrond and I, I forget the name Prince. Is it Prince Durin? Yeah, Nurin, isn't it? Is it Nurin or Durin? I think so. Okay, no, there's a hard D. It's a Durin. Durin. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, well, maybe. So Prince know. Durin is the dwarf, and then Princess Diza. Um, that interaction was interesting. I mean, he's basically, you know, coming over there to hire the dwarves as building contractors, effectively, which is kind of a lame plot line. It's not like there's the world. It's you know, the world is at stake. The high stake is, hey, I, I got to make this uh, city by, you know. This and the question is, why? Why is this yeah, tower important? Well, like, why, yeah, exactly. And so they have that rock destroying contest. And like all that was like, okay, that was interesting. But that's that's like a, that's, that's a B story because it doesn't matter. That's a C it's, story if you're yeah, even that, you're generous. Right. <laughs> it's like, and then the other part too is like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not telling you why I hate you. Uh, not until I, I send you on your way after all of this hoopla. It's like. A uh, literature devil was on the stream with him last night. And he's like, that's kind of like what a really terrible like spouse, woman's spouse would do is like, um, you know, you're, you're not talking to me. He's like, yeah, why? Well, if you don't know, then I don't have to tell you. Like, that's literally the situation of this entire context. Yeah. yeah. Rond and the dwarf, but really it should have been like, oh, you finally showed up 20 years after I sent you my wedding invitation. I have kids now. What the heck? You know, that would be more of a, of a masculine thing obviously written to sound more like tolkien and then just a contemporary right. aspect but yeah like it's not there it's all oh, you abandoned me for 20 years and i'm thinking you know letters exist in tolkien you can you didn't send a messenger out is there no way to say like can you prove that you know he just abandoned you no it's not there you didn't show us anything it's all we have to take the word for it and i hate hate in media where it's like we just have to take the word of the character and we don't get to see an actual consequence of, of prior or after that it, it's just terrible terrible writing and there was so much i mean the writing is writing is bad and I'll, I'll tell you in script you would know about this nearly every scene in those first two episodes could have been half the the length of time or less and part of when you do that like having written scripts myself the best way that will tell you when a script isn't working is you have actors read it aloud. It, when you do a table read, when you do a table read, you're like, oh, I don't need that last line. I don't need that. This can end quicker. I mean, I've noticed at least when it comes to my own flaws, you know, stuff is stuff is usually overwritten and needs to be scaled back and, and cut cut way down. Um, I mean, you know, being someone who's very verbose. Well, yeah. I, 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 there's I, I, that, I but that there's too. a big problem. So, uh, it's a bunch of Americans listening to people speaking in various British dialects, their words, and they can't pay attention to the fact that it's overwritten or derivative or terrible yes. because it sounds so luxurious to foreign ears who have literally grown up with very little interaction with the Brits. Like I, I grew up with a lot of British interaction and I, I can tell between a sophisticated Brit and a, you know, an average one that may, may or not, you know, be very intelligent, but they sound intelligent because of the accent and, and how they, or not so much the accent, but their pronunciation of words. Cause it's, you know, you can't have an accent for your native language unless, but, but regardless of that, yeah, that's basically what is yet two 
U.S. acolytes of J.J. Abrams who are like, ooh, these British people are making our words that when we say them in our head sound kind of mundane, fantastic. So we just want to keep hearing them over and over again. And it doesn't matter if it's good or not. It seems dragged out. You could literally do a fan edit of both episodes and cut them in half, nearly in half. And and you wouldn't lose anything. You wouldn't lose any events occurring. It, things would just happen more quickly. And that's what struck me was just like, ah, oh, everything dragged on. What is the point of this scene? And basically Galadriel wants to talk to the manager, wants to talk to the king. Okay, great. You know, like, like, and, and, I was so disappointed because I saw it in the theater with Polly from Latino slant where, and we kept looking at each other in the middle of the movie. Like, and then there was this tepid applause at the end, which was very polite because, you know, if you think about it, like, you know, they lost money releasing it. This was a marketing play. They, they unexpectedly gave everybody $10 in, in voucher to buy refreshments, which was, we already had the free tickets. It's fine. I'll take it. But, they really want to buy their way. It reminds me of like uh, the New York Yankees. They just buy their way to the World Series, right? They're trying to buy their way into 25 million homes. So, and I don't know when they say 25 million people watched it. Sometimes I know they fudge those numbers. Is it 25 million people or is it 25 million people pressed, you know, homes pressed play? Because I know when I was in the, this is a weird Thing, but when I was in the magazine business, they would, you know, they would count your readership not as circulation like magazines sold. So we might sell 50,000 magazines. They would count 50,000 subscribers as two people read it. So that's 100,000 people. And then we would send magazines to libraries. You could count 10 people for each copy of a magazine sent to a library. So if we sent 1,000 copies to libraries, that's 10,000 people. So I'm really curious how Amazon is reporting the 25 million because didn't they say HBO Max it was 10 million? You ever you ever heard the phrase the second liar doesn't stand a or the first liar doesn't stand a chance? So you're that you lie about something first and then someone lies second, well they just make up a bigger lie to beat you effectively. And so so H I don't think HBO Max is lying, but I think Amazon may have fudged the numbers. But just to just to bring it home real quick, so I, I like, okay. And so many things bug me seeing it in the theater, which can't be faulted. The makeup, you could see the makeup lines on, the on edging, the, yeah. the edging. It was so bad because I don't think it was ever intended obviously to be seen in a theater and they would have done a different color correction. It was so sharp. Like they, it was in some digital theater and it looked, it just looked bad. It looked too crisp. Right. Then I see it on my 4k TV. Fine. It looks better. That it looks better than it did in the theater because it wasn't intended to be in the theater. And I was just even more bored. It was so plodding. It it feels like, I mean, the I think we're spoiled with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films because those movies just, they, they're they three hours each and they just move along quickly. You know where things are going. You're, I mean, especially having seen them so many times now, you look forward to certain things happening. Like, they're great. They're great. And we're kind of spoiled because... There are scenes that might be considered like this is a boring scene, two people talking, whatever. And there's a bunch of those, but there are stakes. There are things being discussed that matter. Things seem to be important. And it, it doesn't feel that way in this show. And Galadriel's quest for revenge is just, I'm not sold. I'm not with her on this journey. She's sad her brother died and wants to get revenge. Well, that's, you know, that's the plot of a Liam Neeson Taken movie right? He's going to get revenge or whatever. It's just, it just, her, and she is the center of the show. And the fact that she's so unlikable and her story is just, I don't know. So I went and I, I, and I haven't seen in like maybe three, four years, uh, the Lord of the Rings. I, I decided to watch it just to go like, well, like maybe my memory of the Peter Jackson movies is better than what it actually is. And I was wrong. They're great. Those movies are great. I got to the end of two towers and Sam has a speech and I got so emotional watching it. I mean, I actually got choked up for two reasons. One, it's such a great speech about hope and never giving up. Right. But additionally, I got really upset because this show is so bad. We will never see something like what Peter Jackson created and all these 
older films being released to theaters. This new era of filmmaking now that has been tainted by woke nonsense and feminist fucking garbage is to me, we're going to look back on it. Like what the fuck were we thinking? People don't want this. They don't want these. They don't want movies that are like this. They're not connecting to it. And I think that normies are finally starting to wake up and go like, Hey, you know, when you see the diminishing returns on Marvel films, like Thor love and thunder underperforming, and I guess Taika Waititi is not going to do another Thor nope. movie. My, my guess is they're just not going to make another Thor movie. Thor may show up in a movie, but they're not. I don't think Thor is going to. Thor movies are done. We're good. You know. Uh, speaking of uh, Chris, as you yeah. alerted to everybody too, we were going to surprise you. Uh-oh. It is your birthday. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, it, it it wouldn't be a birthday if we didn't celebrate in some way. Isn't that right, Mikey? That's right. Andre, could you please read the AMC Theater's $200 gift card that Midnight said just said to Chris Core for his birthday? Wow. Yes, wow. indeed. Uh, Ooh, and that's awesome. uh, that is Chris, on behalf of Midnight Edge, thank you for all you do as a guest on our channel and all you do for fans around the world for quality independent film and pop culture everywhere. The entire team at Midnight Sedge wishes you a happy birthday. Wow. And yes, we are so glad to have you here. It's going to be a su- surprise for you <laughs> over the course of the show, so as not to derail from the beginning. But here we go. Happy birthday, Mr. Gore. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we, we, oh, you managed so not to bring awesome. it up until <laughs> that point. We're like, he hasn't said it yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna and, save it for uh, the very end but yeah and, and that's go. just been delivered to you electronically to your email so you can it's a digital download so you can download the gift card and you're good to go brother uh dude thank you so much that's so great man love it i'll, I'll probably use it today what is it like uh having another birthday yet everyone still thinks you're 30 you no know, no it's no dude like yeah i i see yeah a friend of mine was saying it's like i don't feel old at all i still feel like i'm like 26 you haven't changed just, at all Cause I feel like I just have this like attitude about things and the attitude kind of like, I do think that your mental outlook on life actually does affect your physical. Like I just believe it. And I've always been an eternal optimist sort of in, in light of like stuff sucking even worse today than it has in recent years. But, um, but yeah, no, it's just, I don't know, man, positive positivity, uh, you know, clean living, I guess, you know, so there you go. But yeah, no, I'm just, I really appreciate being a part of this whole, group because i watch you guys for a long time and i would i would like like i was on the show i would yell at you all and i would say well because i because you would be talking about something and i know direct i'd have direct knowledge of something you were discussing and i felt like oh god i'd love to like that's kind of how i started i guess like you know bugging you know some other channels like i i actually think i can contribute to this conversation you know um but yeah no just i appreciate like we have fun on Mondays. And if I can't do it, I'm watching or listening. Because um, I listen to a lot, of, a lot of YouTube in my car, oddly, when I drive. And he's not kidding. No, there's plenty of times where I'd get texts from you and stuff where you couldn't join us. Yeah. But you would let me know something or you would say something. And it's like, yeah. So, and it's a thrill to get to talk to you, even if it's just once a week. But, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And I think, um, you know, I have this movie that's going to be coming out later this year. We're premiering at the Tucson. Thank you, Rachel. We're, that's awesome. We're premiering at the Tucson Film Festival the weekend of October 13th. Thanks, Mark. Thank, thank you, Rob. I was say, you're going to be here a while if you thank everybody. Just, yeah, you might like, want to just thank right. everybody at once. Thank yeah. you, everyone. And hail to the chat. And, you know, I appreciate it. Because there's a lot my, of them coming in. I'm just highlighting them. So Even so, when yeah. my opinions don't necessarily align with yours and, and that happens, it's like, that's okay. I, I, you know, I look for critics to, like, show me a different way of looking at something. You know, show me, like, make me see something I didn't see. And that's what I always look for. It's what I look for when we have writers at Film Threat, right? And if you want to write, just go to filmthreat.com slash contact. We're always looking for new film critics hey. and writers. Um, so, so yeah, like, uh, I just, I, I like the conversation is what I like. So, so yeah, so uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's so awesome. many birthday wishes for you. Oh, it's great. Uh, okay. Happy cool. birthday, man. We're so glad we got to celebrate it with you in a way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I appreciate you having me. And, uh, you know, I'll be back next Monday. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then, uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm, so this movie, I was saying Attack of the Dock. It's premiering at the yeah. Tucson Film Festival the weekend of October 13th. I think tickets will be on sale. I will physically be there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But the point, one of the threads in the documentary is that Attack of the Show was the show is kind of unique for its time. It was very non-corporate environment. Everyone could kind of just do what they wanted. And one of the threads is, you know, being authentic and authenticity and how that's kind of led to where we are. So it's sort of like, yes, it's about Attack of the Show, but it's also about how nerd culture has evolved over the last 20 years. So it's amb it's ambitious, and I really can't wait for you all to see it because I think, I think you're going to be surprised by some things that are in the docs. So, um.